If you grew up in the late 90s to early 2000s, there's a good chance you listen to bands such as Green Day, Blink-182, Sum 41, New Found Glory, MXPX, and AFI just to name a few. However, what you might not be aware of was there was a man who helped construct those breakthrough albums that led to those bands becoming international superstars. Record producer, audio engineer, and musician Jerry Finn was born on March 31st, 1969 in Ventura, California and was immediately put up for adoption. He was eventually adopted within the first year of his life. Jerry's audio engineering career began in the early 90s when he met teacher slash studio manager Candace Stewart while attending Dick Grove School of Music in Los Angeles, California. Stewart would go on to help Jerry land a job as a runner at Music Grinder Studio in Hollywood, California. Working long hours at the studio, often without pay, Jerry would eventually prove his worth and in 1993 they decided to promote him to second engineer. Jerry went on to get hired by Davenshower Sound Studios and it was there that he met Rob Cuvelo. It was while Jerry was working at Davenshower Sound Studios that his career really began to take off. And in 1994, Rob Cavello provided Jerry with the opportunity to be an assistant mix engineer on Green Day's breakthrough album, Dookie. After the success of Dookie, Jerry went from making $8 an hour to making gold records within a year. Sometime during the late 90s, Jerry started working at Conway Studios, where he met the band Blink-182 and was assigned to produce the band's song Mutt for the up-and-coming film American Pie. Now we're in business. Back in a sec. Jimmy, honey, we're... He eventually formed a strong bond with Blink-182 while working on their chart-topping album Enema of the State and would go on to produce the band's next three albums. Blink-182's bass player Mark Hoppus said in an interview with Fuse that Jerry was like the fourth member of the band. This guitar does not sound good ever since it broke and got fuck written all over it. <laughs> yeah. The thing's gonna hurt you. This crack is just gonna keep getting bigger. Did he tell you what's gonna happen when he says it's gonna spring off and break your other hand? No! Yes. <laughs> it will. It'll be a big shocker if you're playing. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not at no, all. No. No. <laughs> Jerry would go on to produce chart-topping albums for bands such as Rancid, The Goo Goo Dolls, Sum 41, MXPX, Bad Religion, New Found Glory, and Alkine Trio. Jerry was soon known throughout the entire industry for his distinct ability to polish punk rock songs with warm guitar tones and punchy mixes. He openly despised using SSL consoles and was said to prefer the Neve 80 series. There's a guy who worked on every one of my records in my career this fell. He worked on a bunch of Green Day records, worked on a bunch of Ranchin records, worked on some Jawbreaker records. His name was Jerry Fett. He just had a brain hemorrhage. And they're talking about pulling him off life support in like three days. On August 8th, 2008, Jerry Finn suddenly lost consciousness and was put on life support after suffering a brain hemorrhage followed by a heart attack. After two weeks without regaining consciousness, Jerry Finn was taken off life support and pronounced dead on August 21st, 2008, at the age of 39. Jerry's colleagues remember him as being kind and having an absorbent amount of technical expertise. After his death, videos and interviews began to surface of artists he worked with sharing stories about their experience working with Jerry in the studio. After Jerry Finn's passing, how hard was it to work with new producers? And have you found a similar chemistry that they have with Jerry since? No, uh, no. I mean, we've had, we've, we've come up with relationships that were as good as the one we have with Jerry, but nothing like what we have with Jerry. Jerry Finn <laughs> defined for us what Blink-182 was, what we sounded like, what our strengths were. Um, he was the most generous producer. He had the greatest love of music. Jerry Finn was a major component in defining the sound for a generation that grew up on warp tours, skateboards, and oversized dicky shorts. He's a person that, until after his death, most people and fans knew nothing about. But Jerry didn't need the praise, he didn't need the fans. He did it because it was something that he loved. And in my opinion, that is what makes a great producer. 